Hi, my name is Frankie. Thank you for listening to my mom. I never listen. <laughs> Welcome to Nothing But Net, Coach Mountain McGilvery. Coach, the Mountain Man, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. And listen, uh, I'm sitting outside uh, my friend's house on a rocking chair, uh, enjoying a nice spring-like weather in Charleston, South Carolina today. How's it going up there in Philly? It's it's a little rainy, a little chilly, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's home, so I love it here. Yeah, I know. It's great. Uh, tell me how it's going for your team this year. You know, it's, uh, it's been a struggle. We, uh, we're very inexperienced and, uh, you know, maybe haven't quite – made the strides that I was hoping we were going to make at this point, but we've, you know, overcome some adversity, some injuries, the energy in the gym every day is still awesome. The kids are battling and, and competing, um, just trying to find different ways. We've had to adjust uh, the system a little bit to compete against mm -hmm. some of the top teams in the conference. Um, I think it's kind of surprising that as much as we've slowed it down in some of these games, our pace is still uh, at the top of the conference, but um you know, we're looking to try to finish strong. Two games left, and uh, it can affect the seedings and the standings so far. So we're trying to move up the ladder as much as we can in these last two games. I was reading something today about adversity and about how, you know, some people can manage it in different ways. It's not really what happens to you. It's how you go about handling adversity, uh, what your um, response is to adversity. What do you think your team's going to learn from this year? Well, I mean, it's something we talk about a lot is that regardless of the failures and success, um, you know, we're living a blessed life getting to, to participate in this. You know, they're getting to go to college for free and play basketball, the game they love with this sisterhood around them. Stop and right there, coach. Stop right there. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. It, right. I mean, That's like it. we're getting so far away from center with sports and academics and athletics. I can't believe I'm going to talk about academics and defense are two things I usually don't talk about but as a mom with kids in college I, I feel the same way my son plays I don't care about winning I want him to have a good experience I want him to learn I want him to make good friends I want him to have you know just enjoy and I don't I don't want to uh, go too far the other way either the reality is that winning affects your experience right um mm -hmm. the, the the more competitive you are the more games you're in the more you win the more fun it is because losing stinks but um, the reality is you still have to focus on the blessings that we have. Like I get to coach college basketball in my hometown. These young ladies get to have one another and compete and play the game they love. And um, you can't let, uh, you know, the opponent's success take that away from you. You just got to keep growing. I had this conversation with Coach Griffin over at St. Joe's about Philadelphia coaches and about the, you know, the way they're born and, and raised and, and and you're an example of that as well. You're on a list of a lot of greats from the city of Philly. Uh, when you start thinking about what Philadelphia basketball has meant just to the overall culture of the game, what, what would you say or pinpoint to a couple of things that are really strong, poignant things about Philly basketball? Well, I just think, you know, in general, growing up in this town as a basketball uh, player, as a fan, as a coach, there's a lot of pride in those that have come before you, right, that have kind of set the stage, sure. you know, from all the way back with Kathy Rush at Immaculata um, doing what she did and then her coaching tree. I just remember being at multiple Final Fours and seeing three of the four coaches be from Philly. You got Gino yeah. and Muffet and, and Rainey Portland and Dawn Staley. And, uh, you know, it was always – uh, um, you know, Philly coaches in that final four. And, and, and just as a young coach coming up in the game, that kind of gave you a sense of pride and people to look up to and role model after. And I think the same goes for the players. Tell us a little bit about your family, because I think you have an interesting story that I want to make sure everybody knows where that great personality comes from and what you're dealing with and balancing every day. Yeah. You know, that is the one thing that, you know, when it's going really good, um, I get to go home and 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 see my kids and the ups and downs of my eight eight children, my wife Grace. And <laughs> when it's going really bad, I got the same thing. So it really does keep me balanced. That uh, you know, when basketball ends, um, and it never ends, but you know, between phone calls and recruiting and watching film, they're still running to this game, to that game, watching this kid play, making dinner here, you know, getting the kids to bed, and. 
Um, you don't have that much time to dwell on the winning and you don't have that much time to dwell on the losing. And it it kind of keeps you centered. Can you compartmentalize some of that? Like, cause recruiting and everything is 24 seven. It's constant uh, evolution of work and life balance. How do you separate some of that when you go home? Cause I know when you go home, they don't care about ball screen coverage and uh, pick and roll defense. Yeah. Well, they do care a little bit, so that actually helps a little bit. I get to hear about it when I just know we, we talk about all the time, like as a parent, you don't want to be that dad in the car complaining about your kid's game on the way home from the game. Um, but I learned that lesson from the other side, because as the coach, I come home and hear my kids complain about our game. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> so I, I get it. Now I have some balance when I'm with them. Like, you know what? They don't want to hear it. Just like I don't want to hear it when we don't play well either. So I'm going to let it go. But, um, you know, it. I try and I try to integrate it more than compartmentalize it. Uh, you know, my family, they're all athletes. My wife, uh, you know, was a manager of a college basketball team. You know, she played high school basketball and, and softball and baseball. And so all my kids are playing. So I, I feel it's more integration than co compartmentalization. I call it rhythm. That's that's what I call it, because there's times when, when mm -hmm. there there isn't ever going to be balance. It's 100 percent this way or 95 percent this way. And you just got to try to manage uh, the rest of it. Uh, I don't have eight children. I only have three. And my mine kids, are all gone. On the recruiting, they love jumping on recruiting calls and showing their smiles in there. They love being at the games when they can. Um, they love getting on the bus and and going to away games with dad. So, um, you know, there is a, you know, I'm away a lot and I'm not with some of the kids. So there's certainly some takeaways there, but there's certainly some, some gifts as well that the kids get to be involved in this kind of life. You've been around the game a long time. You already mentioned some of the all-time greats from Philly and just greats in our game, not just from Philly. But when you when you take a step back from what you've experienced this year, what do you think are a couple of things that you've learned or where's your vision go to what, what might be down the road? Uh, Debbie, I missed a, a little bit there. Um, you were saying, what are things things I learned from this year? But there was something else you said that I missed. You mentioned already some of the greats in the game and some people from Philly that are iconic names and everybody has ups and downs in this game. What are some of the things that you think you've learned from this season that will help you with your vision for next year? Yeah, I, you know, I guess uh, approach a little bit. I kind of decided um, a little early on this summer, you know, the way I wanted to go and, and I, and I'm, you know, and trying to grow and, and become, you know, evolve the game a little bit. I've been trying, I was trying to uh, uh, kind of coach on the fly and let them kind of figure things out as they're playing through things. And um, I feel like maybe I could have helped them early on with a little more structure. And, you know, so it's for me, it's more of going back to kind of things that we had done. We're probably going to start foundationally on the defensive end of the floor uh, next year. Then uh, where this summer we spent a lot of time. I'm sorry about that. This summer we spent a lot of time um, trying to get them to understand how to play and to read and react with one another. And it just wasn't as successful for the time that we put in. And we could have been really good uh, and really well organized defensively as as a team and we've kind of gotten to that point we've gotten much better in that area throughout the course of the season but we could have come into the season that way had I planned that and structured that a little bit better it's also you know we've been through this you know three years ago when I first took over here like we kind of learned the lesson early like when you're not as experienced and maybe the the you know the other teams are older and maybe a little bit more talented um, you're going to take your lumps it's up to us as a coaching staff to not make losing any worse than it already is, right? And to just grow from from each uh, game opportunity to become a little bit better of a team and and not dwell on the negatives. And so we've taken that approach and uh, hopefully that's going to pay dividends in the years to come. You know, you mentioned uh, my counterpart down the road, Coach Griffin. You know, she kind of went through this three years ago with this team yeah. that's dominant right now. Um, they didn't put up a whole lot of wins. And... Uh, you know, we're hoping we can kind of follow that path. I think that's a great point. And I think um, because the landscape in our game is changing so rapidly, there's so many things that are happening at once. And there's a lot of conversation about where the next direction in the game will be from a leadership standpoint and all that. 
I, I think patience is a really important part of uh, being a really good administrator. And uh, that is a great way for us to, to segue to um, the next question that I have for you, which is uh, how much you love it. Like you're invested 100%. Like you've been around it a long time and, and there's not a person that I've ever spoken to about you or around your program that doesn't enjoy being around you, you know, with you, hanging out with you. Uh, what a great guy you are. How funny you are. <laughs> People think you're funny. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the, you know, the, the game is fun. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And competing is fun in general. And to have the opportunity to surround yourself, you know, as a head coach with handpicked people, handpicked recruits um, that kind of match who you are and what you're about and to be with those people and, and, and compete and enjoy the game you love. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Um, there hasn't been a time when I've been doing this that I've been like, oh, I'm not going to do this long term. Like I've, I've talked to a lot of people in the business, like, oh, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do. Like, I, I'm I'm going to if they'll have me, I'll be doing this in a wheelchair on the sideline. Like, I'm, <laughs> that's that's where I'm going to go out, because I don't think about the day when I'm going to. Hire because I, this is what I enjoy doing. If I wasn't doing it in college, I'd be doing it in high school or I'd be doing it in the AAU or I'd be coaching the fifth and sixth grade team. Um, Coaching basketball is what I uh, fell in love with when I was in high school, and it's been that way ever since. Amen, brother. I'm right there with you. They're going to have to drag me out of the chair with the headset on, probably plugged <laughs> into a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to be kicking and screaming. But uh, I feel the same way. I've, I've got 36 years in it, and uh, I, I wouldn't change one thing about my path or how I've gone about falling in love with the game, and I haven't lost my passion for it, and neither have you. Thank you for being on Nothing But Net with us. It's awesome. Thanks for having me.